calculation in FACO was introduced long ago, permitting the intermittent administration of ultrasonic energy with equal intervals of activity and inactivity. This scheme is known as pulsed mode, having an equal on time and off time, or what's the same, a duty cycle of 50%. The frequency of occurrence of ultrasonic pulses is termed the repetition rate and is expressed in pulses per second, being typically adjustable between 1 and 15. At maximum repetition rates of 15 pulses per second, the active interval of each cycle is 33 milliseconds. Pulsed mode is useful to extract loose fragments of harder cataracts as it reduces the risk of an incisional thermal injury because less total energy is delivered per unit time. Pulsed mode also enhances control in the aspiration of fragments and increases followability. Newer FACO consoles have expanded the adjustment possibilities of pulse mode, providing repetition rates above 15 and up to 90 pulses per second. These systems also allow to set the duty cycle departing from the typical 50% on, 50% off ratio. Pulse duration can be shortened down to 4 milliseconds with this modality. This extended range pulse mode has been termed hyperpulse mode and relevant surgical advantages have been associated with it. This mode of ultrasound delivery would be more efficient than equal power standard pulse mode, being able to remove more lens tissue on an isopower basis. Also, hyperpulse mode would produce less heat at the wound site than equal power standard pulse mode, reducing the risk of incisional thermal injury and leading to the term cold FACO. The enhanced efficiency of hyperpulses has been related to a change in the cavitation pattern from the more efficient transient cavitation to steady cavitation as the pulse prolongs. The shorter pulses of hyperpulse mode would favor the more efficient form of cavitation. We propose a theoretical model to analyze tip tissue interaction. The model suggests that an initial backlash should occur before the tissue can advance into the phaco tip. Inertial aspects could explain the enhanced efficiency of hyperpulses without resorting to cavitation. We performed high-speed video recordings of the tip tissue interaction under occlusion mode with human cataracts. Considering the heterogeneous nature of cataracts, we devised an intrinsically calibrated method by rapidly alternating hyperpulses and standard pulses. This process was performed using a custom-designed controller on command of the remote control unit of the FACO console. The high-speed video recordings were processed using a custom-designed image analysis software to track the axial displacement of the FACO tip and of the lens fragment. We obtained composite images representing axial motion versus time. Using our image analysis software, and with greater detail using a proprietary optical interference method, we have determined the anatomy of a standard ultrasonic pulse and of hyperpulses, an important step to understand tip tissue dynamics. A standard pulse will make a phaco tip oscillate around the center position following a sine wave pattern. Stroke will grow during the initial portion or attack zone. It will remain constant during the steady zone and will exhibit an after pulse ringing creating a decay zone. With hyperpulses, the attack and decay zones approximate with the steady zone eventually disappearing as the hyperpulse becomes shorter. Lens fragments describe a displacement pattern that follows the envelope around the ultrasonic phaco tip motion, jumping backwards at the beginning of a pulse. The lens fragment moves forward during the steady portion because of emulsification, and then falls forward as the tip stops oscillating at the center portion always attracted by vacuum. If transient cavitation was responsible for the increased efficiency of served with hyperpulses, then we should notice a slowing down of the fragment advance at some point during the steady portion of a standard pulse. High-speed video recordings showed that this is not the case. Emulsification progresses at a steady pace during the whole length of a standard pulse. Our axial displacement measurement method detects cavitation as an artifact. It has shown that transient cavitation only appears above a certain power level and remains constant during the full length of a US pulse. High-speed video recordings have shown that the overall slope of fragment advance into the FACO tip is the same for pulses and for hyperpulses. Several experimental runs under controlled conditions failed to show any difference using several power and vacuum settings. Our results indicate that hyperpulses are not more efficient than standard pulses lasting 30 milliseconds or more. This surprising primary fact makes the transient cavitation to steady cavitation discussion meaningless. 
The main thermal consideration of modern FACO is the risk of producing a burn at the incision site, increasing the chance of complications and reducing the visual outcome due to induced astigmatism. It has been claimed that hyperpulses would dissipate less heat at the incision site than standard pulses on an isopower basis. The risk of a thermal injury would be reduced when using hyperpulses. Unfortunately, most studies pointing in this direction have used thermocouples inserted somewhere within the incision. These studies report dangerous temperature rises under worst scenario conditions occurring after several seconds, even minutes, of ultrasound. No consideration is made in these studies regarding incision distortion, altering flow and friction areas by the placement of the sensor element. More elegant infrared imaging studies have also been conducted, such as the Ben Miyahimri, thermal injury conditions be met in three seconds. It should be considered that infrared imaging is a complex topic subject to difficult interpretations. For example, it should be noticed that the cornea has a low infrared transmissivity index, making the wound site temperature readings representative of the corneal surface only. It is reasonable to believe that temperature at the deeper friction zones could rise higher and faster than the direct indications of infrared recordings. To determine if hyperpulses really produce less heat than standard pulses at the incision site, we devised a new technique to obtain fast responding, in-depth temperature measurements. Our novel method considers the implantation of a thin temperature sensitive film midway between the incision roof and the corneal surface. This film will totally shift color from dark brown to yellow when temperature rises from 53 to 55 degrees centigrade, acting as a threshold temperature sensor. The time constant of the sensor film to change color was below 0.1 second. With a modal incision, we determined that using standard pulses in the range of 1 to 6 pulses per second, temperature would rise and fall following the on-time and off-time of the US pattern. With repetition rates of 10 pulses per second and above, and totally extending into the hyperpulse range, temperature oscillations fused into a steady temperature. This made full sense from a thermodynamics perspective. The same experiment performed in vitro using big eyes lowered the threshold of temperature fusion to below 4 pulses per second. Any repetition rate above 5 pulses per second showed the same steady temperature rise. Our experiment teaches that a corneal burn may occur within a sub-second interval provided favorable conditions are met. The long period of US power required for a corneal burn to develop described in prior articles may be related to a slow drift in local conditions toward a burn predisposing environment. A key factor appears to be surface hydration. Our study showed that irrigating fluid at ambient temperature over the incision surface produces an instant cooling and delays the temperature rise observed after irrigation. The observation that sleeveless FACO may allow a safer use of ultrasonic power may be related to our finding that silicone sleeves are highly hydrophobic, promoting wound lip desiccation. In fact, wound surface hydration appeared to improve when the sleeve was removed. Surface heat dissipation at the wound site can be greatly improved with constant surface irrigation and with the addition of a fluid retaining element such as this sponge ring. This practice can prevent thermal wound injuries both during sleeved or sleeveless FACO procedures. In summary, no difference in efficiency could be demonstrated between standard pulse mode and hyperpulse mode under occlusion conditions. Transient cavitation does not appear to convert into steady cavitation over time. Thermal data using a fast, minimally invasive deep sensor revealed a similar thermal footprint for any repetition rate above 5 pulses per second. The term cold FACO could then equally apply to standard pulses and to hyperpulses and could be more related to sleeveless conditions that improve wound lip hydration by removing the hydrophobic silicone sleeve. Do me wrong, do me right Tell me lies, but hold me tight And save your goodbyes for the morning